Hi guys, I hope all of you are fine and ready for our new class. Uh, so our new topic is the generalized likelihood ratio test. We will say um, GLRT or just LRT, so when you see LRT, it is our generalized likelihood ratio test. So if you remember, when we have a simple hypothesis, we are using Neyman-Pearson lemma to define our test. So it provides a method for deriving um, our um, the most powerful test of a simple hypothesis. Okay, uh, then when we have a composite one-sided hypothesis, we have to combine monotone likelihood ratio statistic plus Neyman Pearson lemma, and these two provides a method um, for deriving now the uniformly most powerful test. Uh, for a uh, one-sided at composite alternative. Okay, so uh, in the first case we have a simple hypothesis. In the second case we have a one-sided composite alternative hypothesis. So uh, we don't have any testing procedures for a two-sided test or when we have uh, more than one um, parameter case and if the uh, uh, our interest is just one of the parameters so in that case the other unknown parameters are uh, nuisance parameters so we have a, we have to have a new testing procedures to define those so the methods for deriving uh, tests we need, um, are needed are in need actually when we have unknown nuisance parameters like in normal distribution we want to test the population uh, parameters uh, population mean mu uh, but sigma square is also unknown so sigma square becomes a nuisance parameter in that case uh, and uh, when we have a two-sided alternative um, cases are present Okay, so uh, under these conditions, we need to develop a new testing procedure, which is our generalized likelihood ratio test. Uh, so basically, the um, likelihood ratio test or generalized likelihood ratio test is a generalization of a most powerful test. Of the most powerful test. And... Uh, it provides a desirable test in many applications. So it is um, the usage of this um, generalized likelihood ratio testing procedure is uh, more common uh, in practice. Uh, compared to the other one. So, you know, in most powerful tests, usually in the application, we don't have simple hypothesis. We don't uh, recommend to have a um, simple hypothesis, but it is the first derivation of the powerful test concept. Uh, then we have the uniformly most powerful test, so usually we have that. Uh, and we know that uh, the result of the uh, that, that testing procedure gives us the most powerful test for a fixed alpha. Uh, but sometimes, even though we know that uh, we don't have maybe the most powerful test, but it is a desirable test. So most power, uh, likelihood ratio, generalized likelihood ratio test, 
uh, not always provides us a most powerful test, but uh, provides us a desirable test. So, but it is not necessarily um, a uniformly most powerful test. Okay, so it's sometimes different than it may give sometimes different results than uniform most powerful test and it is actually uh, it has good properties uh, when we don't have any uh, UMPT te uh, UMP test okay so let's see how we derive the generalized likelihood ratio test now um, so let's say the PDF of a random variable is given to us so we have a random variable X and we know of the probability distribution of that and we have the parameter space in this case we assume that uh, we can have more than one parameter case in most powerful test and uniform most powerful test we have one unknown uh, parameter but in this case we can assume one or more uh, parameters case so we might have a one dimensional or more than one-dimensional parameter space and again our parameter space is partitioned into two parts um, uh, parameter space for the null hypothesis and parameter space for the alternative hypothesis and mostly we assume that we have a random sample of size n and can be one or more than one um, but uh, if you want to generalize the results usually we prefer to have more than one sample size uh, in the examples, we will uh, definitely say that n equals to 1 or we have a single random variable. So you will know we are talking about the sample uh, of size n, which is greater than 1 or uh, it's just a general n case. Okay, so uh, here we can have any type of hypothesis uh, in the generalized likelihood ratio. That it could be um, simple hypothesis, it could be... Uh, composite one-sided or two-sided so whatever you want actually you can uh, write in the uh, hypothesis part so we don't have any restri restriction so under the given hypothesis again we assume that alpha is given to us and everything based on the likelihood and under the null hypothesis uh, what are the maximum uh, how can we define the maximum point of the likelihood function uh, f uh, based on the given sample and also for the general case. So L theta, you know, um, can be found by the uh, joint distribution. And for a random sample, this is just the multiplication of marginal PDFs. You already know that and can be a single number or a vector of unknown parameters. Okay, so we have to consider uh, two maximum likelihood functions. One under the whole parameter space, which we define by L omega hat. Okay, uh, so it is the value, maximum uh, value of the likelihood function, where our parameters is in the whole parameter space. Okay, so L theta hat and mostly it is just the MLE of theta maximum likelihood estimator of theta so we replace um, the unknown parameter theta with the MLE and find the maximum uh, likelihood value and also the second thing that we will use is the likelihood function maximum likelihood under the null space okay so we want to get likelihood function maximized but where under the null space okay so this is important and let's say uh, let's use this notation for the maximum point under the null hypothesis case so this is the MLE again MLE of theta but we have to add something under the null hypothesis okay so in the null hypothesis we are stating that our um, parameter is some sort of value equals to something less than or equal to something and basically in general this theta hat and theta zero hat are different than each other we will see in some particular cases these two uh, are equal to each other so we have to define 
uh, especially for one-sided alternative cases, we will uh, ca have cases that it had equals to it had zero for certain region of the statistic. Uh, so we will see those examples. So here, the um, testing procedure is that one. If the null hypothesis is true, so usually in the um, in the construction of the hypothesis testing, our assumption is uh, A0 is true. Remember, because we are using the fixed alpha, and in the definition of alpha, uh, we assume that uh, null hypothesis is true. Okay, so here all the testing procedures develop uh, under the condition that null hypothesis is true. So if null hypothesis is true, then the likelihood uh, of the uh, likelihood under the null space should be high, right, uh, compared to the alternative. So if A0 is true, so what we will expect, L theta hat 0, should be greater than L under the null hypothesis. So, so some testing procedures or so some textbooks use just the L theta 0 and L theta 1 ratio, uh, but many textbooks uses the ratio of L theta 0 hat and L theta had general uh, parameter space. So if null hypothesis is true, we expect to see that L theta 0 hat uh, greater than L theta 1 hat. Um, so this means that when we consider the ratio uh, of two cases uh, where we have L theta 0 hat over L under the whole space, let's define it by lambda. Okay, so this is the maximum value of the likelihood function under the theta is in the uh, null space over the maximum value of the likelihood function under the whole parameter space. Okay, so the um, the space of the theta or the region where theta is defined is very important in that case. So if you correctly specify, you will end up with the correctness. But if you don't write the region or the parameter space for theta correctly, then you will end up with the wrong test. So as you can see, basically, um, so here the numerator is always less than, always less than or equal to 1 because L theta hat is the whole parameter space. Okay, so this should be less than or equal to uh, that quantity. So this quantity should be less than or equal to 1. And since it's a likelihood function, it cannot be negative. So we expect to see that this lambda score is between 0 and 1 inclusive. Okay. Uh, so we usually don't see uh, the equality cases, but this is the true um, definition. So here, uh, this lambda gives us the generalized likelihood ratio, not the simple likelihood ratio, but the generalized likelihood ratio. Okay, um, so, so when we consider the nature of our problem. Again, let's turn back to the case that A0 is true case. So if A0 is true, then um, this L theta hat 0 case um, is bigger compared to L theta hat 1. So basically, we can assume that the likelihood function, uh, so we know that the whole space um, are the union of uh, these two cases. Uh, so, sorry, I have to get rid of these hats. Uh, okay, so when we consider that, basically, um, uh, so this means that, that under the likelihood function, then this part has a larger region uh, than this part under the null hypothesis. Okay, so if null hypothesis is true, then when we consider the lambda, then let's say under this condition, okay, so it converges to one, so it is closer to, um, close to one, right? If H0 is not true, 
than the uh, the, the uh, part that the alternative hypothesis uh, is much more uh, strong when compared to uh, the null space in the whole uh, altern uh, whole uh, parameter space. So in that case, l theta is uh, smaller compared to uh, this case. Okay, and then this means that. When we have lambda again, um, this condition under the null and the alternative is close to zero, right? So this is the basic logic. So this means that for uh, lower values of um, the numerator, we will reject the null hypothesis, okay? So rejection rule. then um, lambda close to zero case okay but how how much actually so it is just 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 so we have to give a certain testing procedure for that one so this is our testing procedure so what should be how close to zero so how can we define so we have to uh, find the threshold value for lambda which is less than some given quantity less than or equal to some given quantity then we can um, check the testing procedure so our generalized likelihood ratio procedure will be reject h0 okay if our lambda is less than lambda zero okay so we have to give some threshold value which is unknown lambda zero so if we define this lambda zero value then we will reject our null hypothesis so this is true so this is uh, the whole logic so and if the null hypothesis is true then uh, the likelihood value under the null space is bigger compared to the uh, likelihood under the alternative so this means that when we consider the whole ratio this uh, value close to one and if a zero is not true then we have to reject the null hypothesis right uh, so this means that then um, the likelihood function under the null should be lower than the likelihood function under the alternative when we consider the whole ratio here so then this co uh, so since this value will be smaller uh, then uh, we expect that if a0 is not true this lambda value close to zero uh, then we have to define our rejection rule based on this logic as the our lambda value less than some uh, given or unknown value lambda zero so we have to first uh, define the value of lambda zero like uh, in the case that most powerful or uniformly most powerful case um, uh, for the most powerful or uniform most powerful test we define c right we have to find the value of c so it's like that actually and here uh, we have uh, this lambda zero value should be between again zero and one okay so this quantity should be between zero and one okay so so this is basically um the case so when lambda is large so this means that a0 is stronger okay so when we uh, define the graph in terms of the lambda value the generalized likelihood ratio and the distribution of f of lambda so we will see that it will have a, such kind of shape uh, so where uh, for, uh, um, a zero is correct it's between zero and one so we have to define some lower bound for this lambda zero right uh, and then this region will be our rejection region again what we are using here we are using the known information which is alpha so at the beginning of each test this alpha value should be given to us okay so this region will be our rejection region so we have to uh, define uh, we have to define this region so this is the rejection region okay so this will give give us an intuitively reasonable test
Okay, so it's intuitively reasonable test, but not necessarily the most powerful test. Okay, so it may not give us um, a most powerful or uniformly most powerful test. Okay, um, but it uh, still gives us some uh, testing uh, procedure. Okay. Um, before the um, before the example, uh, let's stop here. Uh, in the next uh, second slide, second uh, lecture notes, I will show you the example. So this this is the testing procedure. Okay. So for what, what you have to do, you have to find the likelihood function where the likelihood function maximized under the null space, and then also. Um, uh, you have to find the likelihood function maximized under the whole parameter space and get the ratio. And then rejection procedure is reject A0 where this lambda generalized likelihood ratio less than some unknown lambda 0 value. And based on that, we have to define our lambda 0. And again, try to write this lambda as a function of some statistic and then write the whole Testing procedure as reject A0 if that statistic is less than C, greater than C, or less than C uh, and greater than C, uh, those type of um, uh, testing procedures, then you have to define the value of C using the given alpha value. So the testing procedure will be like that. Okay, so let's give the steps in LRT 1. Define and the whole parameter space, and then find the, in the second case we have to find um, the MLE under um, H0 okay so get the theta zero hat value or values okay so we can have more than one parameters in this case and under the novel hypothesis true we have to find the maximum likelihood estimators of all unknown parameters okay emily of all unknown parameters under h0 and then um, in the second, third step, or you can combine second and third one, Emily under um, the whole parameter space. I'll the head. So this is again the Emily of all unknown parameters okay and then for find lambda which is this one and then five um, write the rejection region for lambda okay so lambda less than lambda zero six um, try to write lambda uh, as a function of a statistic and Define the tests based on this statistic. So you have to find the rejection region based on the uh, that, that statistic, and then um, then find um, the threshold value uh, of the rejection region using the distribution of the statistic um, 
uh, and, and define the whole test. Okay, so this is basically the procedure. So again, in this last step, you have to use the alpha. So this is the given probability. Again, rejection region, reject A0, where A0 is true case. So this is the whole, um, uh, so basically we have to use alpha to be able to generate all most powerful tests and uniformly most powerful tests and also the likelihood ratio test. But this rejection region, how we find the rejection region depends on the structure of the hypothesis. So if it is simple, we are using Neyman Pearson lemma, define uh, most powerful test. If we have a composite uh, one-sided alternative, we are using uniformly most powerful test procedures. Uh, we can still use all the testing procedures under the likelihood ratio test. So both simple hypothesis, composite hypothesis, two-sided uh, composite, or when we have more than two parameter cases. So uh, so this is the generalized version. So all type of tests can be done under the generalized likelihood ratio test. Okay, so we will have some examples in the next uh, uh, video.